Hey guys, I'm Ammon Carver, Chief Artistic Director for Ulta Beauty, and we are here getting ready for our Naha show, and I would love to show you guys some tips on a couple of the girls that I'm getting ready today. Come check it out. First thing is I wanted to create a really cool kind of fluffy, frothy texture. So this is what I call a Rick Rack set, right? So you guys can see a few of these that are finished. They almost look like little cicada bugs or something on her head. They're kind of cool by themselves, but this is really easy to do. So I'm gonna take a serrated hairpin, just like this one. Pin, I'm gonna open it just a little bit put the section in between, and then a little trick, see how my finger stays in between, so it keeps the hairpin open, and then I can just wrap once, twice, and cinch it down so I can get it started, and then just once, twice, and then cinch it, once, twice, cinch it, and then what this is gonna do is this is gonna create a nice, tight S pattern, right? So someone like Kira's hair that's naturally straight and fine, I can actually take, create this set all the way through. It takes a little bit of time, but it's really worth it, because then what you do, once you get these in, then you take and you hit each in individual one of these sections with a flat iron and warm them up. And the metal from the hairpin will keep it warm and it creates a set, so when you open it up, it creates a really cool texture. So to close this, now that I'm at the end, I pinch it, but I have all these ends and I cross and bend it one direction and then cross it over the other. So it creates like a little X and then it's gonna hold your hair in place just nice and easily there. So then after I have all these finished just like this, I'm just gonna go with a flat iron and I'm gonna warm that section up, that heat, and then I'll let it cool. Then I'll be able to take those out and this will create a really crazy, expansive, fun texture that you can do all kinds of fun, and sh fun shapes with. So for Kira's look, I'm doing this on half of the head and then on the other half of the head, which I'm gonna have you guys look on the other, other side and we'll show you what we're gonna to do to, to create a cool little balance. Okay. So all I'm gonna create now is this nice little zipper grid. I think that Sean showed it, but I'm gonna break it down for you guys just a little bit. You can get creative and have as much fun with this, but what I like about this technique is it's great for people who are intimidated maybe by braiding, but you can get a similar effect just with a series of ponytails and you can create like a fun little design that's gonna become an anchor spot spot for a piece of hardware that I'm excited to show you guys in just a second. But first things first, so we take these vertical, or the, excuse me, these horizontal sections and then you subdivide them with diagonal lines. So I've taken my next one up here so I can show you. And all I'm gonna do is make sure that the line from underneath, I'm actually taking all the way through that section so it connects. See how that line goes all the way through? And then I'm gonna take, and I'm actually gonna, take a ponytail or a little elastic, turn this way a little bit here so you can see the top, there you go. And the only key is to make sure that the elastic sits on the back portion of the square. So I'm gonna actually use Kate's hand to hold that out of the way so it stays nice and clean. Take the section, rubber band, and see I'm just keeping my elevation nice and low as I anchor that rubber band so that it sits low and clean. And you just want your sections to be nice and clean, get good tension on that elastic. Once you've wrapped it a few times, so it's gonna stay, I'm just gonna go ahead and relax it. And then you can cinch it tight if you need to, but the whole idea is that those rubber bands again sit nice and parallel to each other and you'll create a cool little grid. So I'm gonna create that same section. Let me do one more for you guys so you can get the idea of it. So this was my first sectioning line. Now I just literally run my comb parallel, take it through that section that I've divided. So you guys can see that parallel section that's going all the way through. All I'm gonna do is pick up that section, let my comb lay on that grid and just follow the parting right up so it stays nice and parallel and you get nice partings that are nice and even as you're going through. Pick up my rubber band, keep my section nice and low towards the back, wrap and keep it anchored nice and low. Super easy, super quick and efficient way to get sort of like a cool, like almost like an intricate braiding detailed effect without, if you're not one of those people who are really confident with like detailed braiding, you can get that type of result or that type of effect without having to to worry about the actual braiding itself. So this grid would then be all the way complete. I would finish this through as we go through prep. And then like the surprise element, I have two little things that I wanna be able to show you guys. I'm gonna grab over here from the table. 
Kate's going to through this. I found this cool. We're like in the in the concept for our shoot. We're really going through with this hardware collection, and I found this actual spiked fabric. Uh, may, you guys may have seen it before. I use it in some elements, but what I'll do is I'll actually put this in between my grid rows. I just use a little double-sided toupee tape, and I can lay that along the contour of the head so that we have a little bit of like a metallic accent piece in between that gives us a little bite and a little bit of an edge. And just because it's Naha and we want to push it to the next level, once I put these uh, spikes in between each row, I'm going to follow up with these little zip ties here. So this is just an industrial size zip tie that you get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. So the shape that I'm going to create is fullness and round shape with all this texture and then I'm going to balance it by using the zip ties in through this side to create a symmetrical balance but made out of hardware and zip ties. So frizz and texture on this side and then uh, this cool little balance out of zip ties on this side. So once I've got all these rows put in there, then I'll thread these through. You can see, I'll just do a little bit so you can kind of see. These would be all the way through. And I would just take, feed them through the actual sections, just like that. And then I can zip tie them closed. And I can spin them and create any kind of like circular shape that I want to to create all kinds of drama and all kinds of like avant-garde effect. Yeah? So this is what I've been doing and I'm, I'm kind of in continuation of working with what I'm doing with Kira, but I want to talk to you guys about one more thing that I'm doing with Brie and then uh, I'll send you guys on your way because we got to get ready for this show. So you guys know I'm obsessed with these zip ties. I actually found these ones that are just, they're stainless steel, the pure metal, which I think works perfect with our like suspension uh, concept for this show. Um, so you can see a few of these. What's great about these, I can cinch them tighter and I can create sort of like a design that when you look like from the front, it gets smaller to bigger and I can create a shape that once I start to play around with the hair, I can start to back comb and create shape that fills in between these actual uh, zip ties to create lots of volume and lots of shape. And then as I'm getting through the back, what I'm going to create is I'm going to end up cinching a few of these all the way down. So I'm going to take, I can just slide the zip tie through the braid. And then if I were to create more of the loops, you would just stop or cinch it as tight or as small as you want the loop, then a tip roll it around because you see the free edge here. You don't want to see that free edge, but it also acts as a way of propping it up. As I spin it, I use that free edge, that free edge, I'll tuck it under the braid and that's actually what gives you stability for the loop to stand on its own. Watch what happens if I don't have that free edge, right? The loop falls. And then this way I can create these beautiful shapes all the way through. Another way that you can use these is I can cinch them all the way down. So I can cinch it all the way nice and tight like you would a normal zip tie. And then I have the ability to have these free edges that can show up from behind if you wanted to create some kind of like a cool shape or silhouette that shows a little bit of like dimension through the back. I've got a center braid with Brie here that I'm putting through these loops. I'm gonna have some of these sp sticking out through the back and then once those are all in, then I'm gonna start to lift and fluff and shape her hair in designs and lines and, sh and, and uh, shape that kind of uh, mirrors and reflects what's going on with the hardware pieces. So I think one of the things that's most important about this is that it's still a hair show, it's not a hardware show. So use your editing eye when you're gonna be using pieces like this to accent. These take it to an avant-garde place, but still we want these models to be able to walk out there and have people go, wow, look at that hair that happens to be accessorized with these hardware pieces, not the way other way around. It's a hair show, not a hardware show. Um, once we're finished, we'll fluff and shape. We have lots of work to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait for you guys to see what we have uh, on the stage tonight for Naha. Thank you so much for joining us. See you later.